Hey everyone, Silver Steeler here. Finally going to get my Morgan Dollar Collection updated, remastered as I like to say, and with the new lighting kit, I'm going to break out all my raw coins and uh, see what they really look like without the glare of the airtight around them. So, as many of you have known, I've been saying for some time I've been wanting to get this video redone. I've had some additions. Um, and I've replaced some of my cleaned ones with some originals. Well, non-cleaned, I should say. So, I've decided to go ahead and do this in some parts instead of making one long video. Although, there will be a long video when I put everything together, if you wish to watch that. But at, all, at the top there is all my raw. And I have all my graded at the bottom. I am two dates away from having a date set. I need the 1893 and the 1895. And I'm about midway to a little bit over 50% of having the complete business strike. It contains two Carson cities and a Redfield. So, let's sit back and enjoy the ride. Silver Steeler here, back with segment two. This segment will cover the years from 1890 to 1904. And then, of course, 1921. So here we have the 1890 Philadelphia. They minted 16,802,000 of them. Pretty high mintage. I've got a nice BU example here. That's probably a good 63, I would say. It's got some nice toning going around. The outside perimeter, very, very, very good clean coin too so I like that one back is very clean as well I believe I could get a 63 on that anyway there's your 1890 Philadelphia to the next coin 1891 San Francisco they minted 5,296,000 of them that year and unfortunately I have a cleaned one more than likely because they actually melted quite a few of those that year. These things carry a premium because good examples are hard to find. So apparently the person who had my coin decided that, hey, I'll make it look better and clean it. Now this coin right here is the only clean coin that I have in my date run. And then of course I don't have the 93 and 95. So this would mark three coins I'm away from having non-cleaned date run. And this coin is one of those three that I will need to replace. Almost like they, it's an old cleaning. So it's getting some of its luster back, particularly on the reverse. But the obverse is just, uh. Yep, it's cleaned. The only cleaned one you're going to see on this run. So why don't we get to the next coin? 1892 Philadelphia. And with these years in 92 through 95, the mintages went extremely low. And this one was a good example of that. They only minted 1,036,000 of these. And I believe I have a cross between an extra fine and an AU. I would say extra fine plus. Got some toning going around. These are one of my better raw coins. I paid a little bit for this, but it's also worth a little bit. Just a little detail in the breast feathers, which is why I'm giving it an extra fine plus. Like I said, you start getting into these 92s through uh, through 95, and mintages are really low. So it's not cleaned. It's a good example. On to the next 1894, coin. 1894, New Orleans. Uh, again, another one of them tougher years. Um, I don't have a 93, so I skip up to a 94 here. I minted 1,723,000 of these. And I believe I have an extra fine. It's not been cleaned. I believe I got this from Atmax. Don't know off the top of my head what I paid for it. But it is a good example of those harder years to get. Nice 
no no rim damage, just you know, no breast feathers, of course. But uh you know, these these are the tougher years to have one. So of course I don't have a 95, so I'll be right back with the 96 onto that coin. No 95, but here is an 1896 Philadelphia. And this is when they started ramping up production again. So they minted 9,976,000 of these. And I got a nice BU example. They're not very hard to get. A lot of these have survived. So not hard to get an MS-63 or 64 at a reasonable price. I certainly did. I think my LCS sold this to me for around 20 bucks, which is not bad. They're just, you know, there's a lot of them. Their survivability rate has been very high. So, a very easy coin to get. Lots of luster on that. That's the 1896 Philadelphia. On to the next coin. 1897 New Orleans. They minted 4 million and 4,000 of them that year. Uh, I've only got a good example. The rim's all still there. As you've seen during this presentation, I haven't had too many very bad looking coins. This is one of the few in my collection. It's going to get an upgrade. Right now, it's just a whole filler. You know, a lot of these were actually melted down, is the reason why it's harder to get one of these, but they're still out there. You're just going to pay a little bit more for them. But there's my whole, whole filler for right now. It'll get an upgrade. On to the next coin 1900 Philadelphia. They minted 8,830,000 of these. However, a lot of them were melted. Uh, the reason they were melted is, of course, for that peace dollar. And they picked on the early 1900s because a lot of those coins were still in the U.S. Treasury. hadn't been handed out yet, so they were the easiest to get a hold of. So even though some of these have some high mintages, others don't, of course, they're still a little bit trickier to get. And this one... It's got a little rim damage on the bottom. I call this an extra fine. You know, it, it, it'd be an easier upgrade. It's not particularly hard. But like I said, those 1900s on, 1901, 2, 3, 4, you know, they're just a little tougher to get. A lot of those were melted. And I'll be saying that more and more with the upcoming coins that we're going to do. So there is your 1900 Philadelphia on to the next 1901 point. New Orleans. And that year they minted 13,320,000. Quite a few. And when you do have, when a lot of collectors have these coins and they have them in the early 1900s, a lot of the, of the collectors will have the New Orleans mint because out of all the mints that were striking the Morgan dollars, this one was striking the most. And, uh, you know, you start getting these in some of these MS64, 65 grades. And they could be costly because of the fact that New Orleans didn't really do very good strikes. So an easier one to get of the early 1900s, but in order to get it in a decent grade, you'll still end up paying a little money for them. So there we go. There's your 1901 New Orleans. On to the next 1902 one. 1902 Philadelphia. 7,994,000 of them were produced and minted from Philadelphia. And you know... Again, some of the a lot of these were melted down, but these have more of a survivability rate than some of the others that we just previously looked at. So, not hard to find these ones. This is an extra fine. I'd give it an extra fine, maybe between an extra fine and AU, if that's possible. An extra fine plus, let's just say. Not bad. Brush feathers are missing, but all in all, not a bad example. Probably an easier upgrade in the future. But uh, there's your 1902 Philadelphia. On to that next coin. 1903 Philadelphia. And that year they minted 4,652,000. So the number's starting to drop down. You've got a certain amount that have been melted. So these coins can carry a premium. That's a nice BU example. I believe I got this from Infinity Coins located in Idaho. This is a really nice example. Got some Tony going on in the perimeter. Beautiful coin. I really love this one. One of my favorites. Nice, clean fields. 
definitely be getting this one graded one day. Breast feathers are strong. Overall strong strike. A nice one to have in good condition. There's your 1903 Philadelphia. On to the next coin. 1904 San Francisco. A much sought after coin. And the reason being is not only were only 2,304,000 of them minted, but many of them were melted for the peace dollar. Heavily melted. Read up on it sometimes. So this coin here in good condition. So I got off my LCS. He wanted 45 for it. I think I paid 30 for it. That's what I talked him down to because I knew the significance of having an S on the back of this 1904. And it's still got its rim. An upgrade on this coin is going to cost me. So while it may be on the radar, it's not very high up on that list right now because I've got one. Just happy to have one. Anyway, that's going to bring segment two to a close. Stand by for segment three. For those that just watched segment two, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and all those other good things. I'll see you on the next video.